Hi, everybody. I'm Steve Kellner with California Education Partners, and joining me today is Dustin Seaman, Assistant Superintendent of Ed Services at Beverly Hills Unified. Dustin, thank you so much for taking the time in such a crazy time to be here. Thank you for having me. Uh, so the, we want to talk today about, about student services and, and counseling um, in, in all of these uncertain times. And so maybe to start us off, what, what role can school counselors play in what's become a distance learning world? Yeah, so school counselors can and should be still part of the process of supporting students. Um, American School Counseling Association identifies the role of a school counselor in three realms or three tiers. Is that academic support, that social emotional learning support, and also just assisting with their post-secondary options. Um, you know, with so many things that are changing right now in AP testing, college admissions, um, the way that we're delivering curriculum, um, this has also morphed the role of the school counselor and the school counselor is essential to really supporting those students and families to navigate these changes. They should be connecting with students either virtually through meetings or providing up to date correct information via email because the students and the parents are receiving information from all angles and it's very hard for them to digest and so we've been leveraging our school counselors to be able to par that information into nice easy digestible packages for our families to be able to read and we keep messaging if it didn't come from the school counselor or school leader it's not correct excellent uh, i really appreciate that because that there is uh, almost information overload for, for for a lot of our students and a lot of our parents uh, let me talk a little bit about about high school seniors in particular because we we know that that seniors are experiencing a great deal of anxiety uh, right now coming to the, the end of their high school career very suddenly and then needing to transition to either college or, or career option. Uh, what, what role can the counselors play in this process? Kind of going back to what I just stated is really the most important thing is providing the most up-to-date and correct information for their students. Um, these are literally changing by the day. Um, if they do not help our students understand the changes and help navigate the deadlines, you know, the students will not be successful in this it, it, where we are currently living. You know, school, school counselors should be reaching out to the professional networks, um, surveying college and universities, uh, career options, what are the unions asking for us within some of these career options, um, and being able to provide, again, that correct information. Um, whether that be they're hosting, you know, a Zoom or a Google Hangout meeting with their individual students um, or going through each of their students on the caseload and kind of looking whether they utilize a system like Anaviance or how did they collect what post-secondary options these students applied to and trying to make sure that they're funneling those, that, those information uh, pieces to those students. Uh, because again, the students are relying on social uh, media and hearing stuff on different news networks. And sometimes that information isn't always correct. So we're, me as a school leader is really leaning on my college counselors or school counselors to take that information and again, make it digestible and being able to provide it in a timely manner to my families to help alleviate some of the anxiety. Uh, a perfect example is the advanced placement testing. You know, it's something that I think all of us across the United States and internationally are talking about the major changes to the test itself, um, the how a student's going to access technology. Um, I think a school council plays a role in helping them find community options to support if they have a lack of technology. Um, also making that connection between the student and college board to help figure out a solution if that student doesn't have the technology to be able to take that advanced placement exam. So it's those types of pieces where the school counselor needs to step up and be that um, provider of the correct information, but also the liaison between some of these college board because the school counselors have those professional networks already in place. The student or the family does not. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now more than ever. Um, and, and kind of moving from our, our older high school students uh, as, we, as we move down the, the grade span, we're so used to bringing our parents into our schools, uh, talking to them about what we do, showing them about what we do, but that's not possible uh, and, and certainly in the, in the next few months. So how can counselors go about building parents' capacity and, and, and parents' skill set in, in, this, in this new world that we're in? You know, 
school counselors should be um, and continue to be a partner with the parents to begin with. I think in this time, um, we've really worked with our school counselors on finding solutions of whether it's um, filming small little 30 second clips to be able to provide the parents with some information that's up to date. And it's like you, you know, stating it's not always just around the post-secondary or the career, it's around academics, uh, course selections going on for a lot of schools. So some of the parents are nervous about honors placements or where their students are gonna take in the fall. And so by utilizing some, like we're doing right now is uh, filming, um, mm -hmm utilizing your school counselors to create small little videos and, and try to push that out through either your district social media platform or posting them on a website or sending them out via email um, and trying to get them in multiple ways to the parents with that correct information. Um, but also uh, looking, I think we need to leverage our school counselors right now in looking at what our community is offering and taking those community resources and providing that in those short videos as well you know where is food being provided outside of your own school um, where are some of the community counseling being provided because some of our parents are living through some issues themselves maybe they're being unemployed yep. right or you know they may have just been laid off um, and, and so having the school counselor provide some of those community-based counseling that might be free of charge at this time or a sliding scale. Um, but also our school counselors should be providing virtual meetings. You know, we've worked really hard on getting our school counselors into, we utilize Google Classroom in my district. Others use different platforms from Schoology and, and creating their own classroom with their caseload inside of it um, and encouraging their parents to participate in that, com uh, that information digestion, I keep calling it, I don't know why, but, um, but that way the most up-to-date information is being provided to them, but also encouraging the parent to reach out to them as well. Um, I think that the school counselor doesn't just play the role of supporting the student, but it also plays the role of supporting the parent. So meeting, you know, virtually with the parent to answer questions around uh, course selection to how to support my student at home academically. Um, so that's what I would encourage uh, us as school leaders to get our school counselors to do. I really appreciate that framing of uh, parents being in the classroom with the counselor, uh, because I, I think that's something we, we, we don't necessarily take advantage of. Um, and, and speaking of some of our, our most vulnerable students, we know that, that principals and other school leaders um, have a whole network of supports uh, for our most vulnerable students when school is in session. Um, when school is not in session physically like it is now, uh, how can those supports continue to get to those families and kids? What, what are some ways that can happen? I think leveraging, again, our school counselors is probably the, the, the key to success here is the school counselors have probably the most robust relationship with their students because most of our school counselors will continue on with these students for multiple years. Um, mm -hmm. And so they, they probably already have an idea of who are those most vulnerable students from a resource standpoint, whether it's uh, food or technology or school supplies, um, also home life. I think what we have really focused on is how to get this e-learning into the household, but we kind of forget that some of these students are going home to abusive situations or are in environments that aren't supportive of learning. They could be a first generation student where the parents just don't even understand how to support the learning. And the school counselors usually are the first for me as a school leader to turn to, and they probably already know what I'm about to ask. You know, what's happening in this household? And the school counselor usually already has the information for me. Um, and so I, as a school leader, in, in continually as I'm receiving these community-based resources, looping them into my school counselor, and then they're able to start to par back and figure out what individuals really do need this. Instead of sending out to the masses and it falling on deaf ears, it's really the school counselors now are making um, really uh, individualized efforts to reach out to those families that they already know. You know, some of those community-based counseling opportunities, reaching out to students and offering that, because then those community bases can wrap around those students when we can't when we used to when we're in our physical buildings. So I think for the vulnerable students and me as an uh, educational leader is leveraging the school counselor to be that liaison for those students. 
help them get engaged, find ways to get them engaged with the teacher, you know, help them find ways to get the resources in the community, um, leverage us, have the school councils leverage us for those community-based resources, but then also leverage the teacher to see what is the teacher asking of that student, maybe working with that teacher to navigate some of that, par back mm -hmm. some of that, because they know what's happening at the home or lack there of support at home. Um, so it's really, we're, we need to rely heavier on our school counselors for their expertise of really knowing that individual student instead of looking at the students as a whole group. Appreciate that framing. Yeah, absolutely. The, the, those those multi-year relationships really come into play in times like this. Um, and, you know, I think we've we've all heard the the adage that sometimes the last to get care are the caregivers themselves. So as, as school leaders, we know that our, our school counselors are going to be dealing with a lot of this trauma and, and seeing it firsthand. How can we make sure that they are cared for uh, throughout this process? I think as school leaders, we need to continually check in on our school counselors, even if we were in our physical buildings. You know, our school counselors take on so much of the social emotional lift within our communities that it, it really can tear down professionals. You know, as a former school counselor, I had a, a very strong school leader and he would consistently stop in, um, you know, and just check in on me and see the process. And, and then it provided me an opportunity also to bend his ear uh, to be able to um, find solutions for individual students. And I think that we need to do that even more now, not just with our school counselors, but our teachers. I think we as school leaders need to set these types of meetings up where we're having mm -hmm. these one on one virtual meetings because we don't know what's happening within our school counselors' homes. We don't know what's happening within our teachers' homes. And so, um, by, by creating this relationship, this open dialogue right now um, is only going to benefit the work, that, the work product that's gonna come out of our teachers and our school counselors. And so my best, my best advice as a school leader is reach out to your school counselors and set these individual meetings. It might feel awkward at first, but I promise after the second and third, they'll start to trust in you in this process as well. And they'll start to provide you with more information than you could ever imagine about some of the students and some of the things that are happening in the community, but also what's happening with themselves. So just reach out. Create Absolutely. an line out of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We we need to be there for them as as, as they are for everyone else. Um, and and so I, I really appreciate your perspective uh, during these crazy times. I know that a lot of the resources you mentioned are included on the American School Counseling Association uh, website. Was, was that a place you'd encourage folks to go? Absolutely. Um, and I also encourage not only from a school leader standpoint, but encourage your school counselors. And, and I'm not calling it downtime right now, but it seems <laughs> like, you know, without having their office, they might not, uh, the students are swinging by them all the time. But I promise right. you that students are probably emailing them with a ton of questions, just like they would have stopped by their office. So leverage American School Counseling Association. But also, you know, as you as a school leader are receiving some of these really great opportunities, whether they be free trials or anything like that, to encourage your school counselor to vet it out prior to you mm -hmm. sending it out. They know what's best from a social emotional learning standpoint. So allow them to vet that out for you before you're sending it out to the masses. And so that would be another recommendation that I would make. Very, very wise uh, on that. Try before you buy, right? Yes, um, so, uh, Dustin, again, thanks so much for, for sharing this in, in such a crazy time. I uh, want you and, and your family to stay well while all this is going on. And, and hopefully we can, uh, we can do this again when, when things are a little bit more normal in the future. Absolutely. Thank you, too. To everyone, stay safe. Thanks a lot.